My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Some of you might have seen the movie titled Lagan that was made in 2001. It depicts an epic cricket game that served as a challenge between the villagers and the British officers governing the district. If the villagers won, they will be exempted from paying taxes in the following three years. But if they lost, they will have to pay three times the normal taxes they were paying. Once the villagers were practicing for the cricket game, the ball went out and stopped at the feet of an outcast called Katra, who, apart from being an outcast, also had a disabled arm. Precisely, his right arm was disabled, probably as a result of poliomyelitis. When he was asked to throw the ball, he did that, but the captain was unable to catch the ball because the ball in the air changed course. And that was when the captain discovered that Katra, this outcast with a disabled arm, had a natural talent of spinning the ball. It was an extraordinary talent. And it occurred in that moment that they were looking for one more person to complete the team. And so Bhuvan, the captain, went on to ask Katra to join the team. But he met an obstacle, a challenge, which was this, that the villagers, the others that formed part of the team, refused to accept Katra as one of them because they realized that he was an outcast. And so it was a great obstacle that Bhuvan had to face. I wouldn't want to spoil the story for you in case you haven't seen Lagan. You can find out more on your own. But it took the captain a good dose of courage to associate himself with the disabled outcast, touching him, embracing him, and getting him to utilize his extraordinary talent to aid them in winning the cricket game. Bhuvan said, whether you support me or not, Katra will play. And with this, he went on to win their consent and Katra played. And he was very, very useful during the game. He sees the amount of good Katra could do, this, this outcast with a disabled arm, and invites him to play in the team. Today, in the gospel, we are witnessing something similar to this. With Jesus, we view Jesus as always as our main character, as our captain. It's St. Luke that tells us in his chapter 6 of his gospel account, on another Sabbath, when he entered the synagogue and thought, a man was there whose right hand was withered. And Jesus, how did you notice this man? The same way you notice everyone in need. The same way you take notice of me as I come to you begging you for one problem or the other. Imagine the range of things this man could not do with his arm. Probably at that moment, Jesus, while teaching, would have put up a question and this man, in an attempt to answer, could not raise that arm. Maybe at this moment, Jesus noticed him. He couldn't give a handshake. He couldn't ride a cart. If he were to play soccer, surely he wouldn't be the keeper, the goalkeeper. Better still, some people would see that as an advantage. But Jesus took notice of this man. But Jesus sees beyond the situation, thinking perhaps this man could be useful for something. But at this moment, Jesus, you are going to face a difficulty, which is this, that the scribes and the Pharisees we are there watching to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. We are told that he knew their thoughts. So we too, we sense the dilemma Jesus is placed in. What should he do?
What are you going to do, Jesus? And this is the high point. He said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. And he rose and stood there. This is not the first time, Jesus, you would call out someone in the midst of those gathered, as if you enjoy using real-life examples to teach. Remember, Jesus, that you can use me too. I volunteer myself so you can solve this problem for me. And then use me as a testimony, as an example. And Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to destroy it? An open question. Jesus puts perhaps first to himself, then to the Jewish authorities present, to that man, of course, with the withered hand, and surely to you and to me. I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to destroy it? No answer. No one answers. In fact, in parallel passages, we are told clearly that the scribes and the Pharisees keep quiet. St. Luke goes on to tell us that Jesus looks around on them all and says to the man, says to him, stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. Wow. At this moment, Jesus performs a miracle. Not even by touching the man, simply gives him a command, stretch out your hand. And the man did so, and his hand was restored. In fact, this is not a life and death situation. This man could have still survived up till now. He had been surviving without the hand. But why does he just go on to heal him? And I think the answer, we can find it in this question Jesus asks. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? If Jesus, if you, Jesus, had not seen the good this man could do with the hand, you wouldn't have gone on to heal him. And sometimes you and I, we ask Jesus for things, we ask God for things, for this and for that. I know many boys that approach me believing in the power of intercession of a priest, asking for them to be scouted by one of these big football teams. Most boys ask for God to grant their parents money to get them the latest PS PlayStation console. And many things like that. One asked me to pray that he could play football as well as a famous football star. Well, well these are petitions, these are wishes. Girls who have their own, grown-ups who have their own, they ask for more serious things. But if Jesus does not see the good that will come from that, probably he might not grant that. But for this man, and I think, Jesus has seen the good he could still do. He could do more good with that hand. And then he goes on to heal him. Meanwhile, we shouldn't stop asking. But sometimes Jesus may not grant these things that we're asking for. Perhaps for our own good. In fact, in other parts of the gospel, you will find Jesus even saying that if your right hand will cause you to fall, better to cut it off. It's better to go to heaven without our right hand than to go to hell with that hand. And so the same with the eye. But Jesus sees the good this man could do and then goes on to heal him. I like the way St. Ambrose of Milan, who was a father of the church of the 4th century, put it, he was saying, You hear the words of the Lord saying, Stretch forth your hand. That is the common and universal remedy. You who think that you have a healthy hand, beware lest it is withered by greed or by sacrilege. Hold it out often. Hold it out to the poor person who begs you. Hold it out to help your neighbor to give protection to a widow, to snatch from harm one whom you see subjected to unjust insult. Hold it out to God for your sins. The hand is stretched forth, then it is healed. And so Jesus saying, this man, stretch out your hand. If this man were to go back home, of course, he will remember what our Lord had said. Is it lawful to do good on Sabbath or to do harm, to save life or kill life? Yes. Let's not remember this. May we also be eager to utilize the good things God grants us to do some good, even during this long period of restricted movement. And with this, we can ask our Lord, Jesus, this thing I'm asking you for is for your glory. 
I'm going to do good with this. Let us go to the Blessed Virgin Mary, who intercedes for us before God, to help us to learn how to utilize the good things God gives us to do good to the others. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.